Good evening everyone. This is another short and quick update about uh, development of uh, PyStorm 68K. And uh, as you can see here, I have a 1.4 version up and running, and this is the latest iteration. And you're probably wondering if you are watching my videos, why there is so much delay since uh, I had uh, this uh, 68K uh, PyStorm variant uh, up and running months ago. But um, I came to, uh, I faced a problem with um, different versions of uh, the flip flops and uh, latches. And um, after a lot of testing, I kind of concluded that uh, it's not uh, D flip flop versus latch at all. It's about who, who makes these parts. So in Xperia, this, uh, this design, initial design was quite good enough. I mean, it, it is what it is. It's, it's a very simple design. But um, then after getting the reels of uh, new parts, I noticed that uh, even the part is the same, it's actually a different vendor. Uh, I, I believe it's Texas Instruments. So this is a big difference. And the problem was um, functionality is the same, but uh, the one problem was rema uh, remains, and that is uh, this uh, parasitic uh, powering coming from the part, uh, where Nexperia parts are, I assume they have some sort of isolation or protection diodes in place. Um, Texas Instruments parts, they don't have that. And uh, they will actually get, uh, even if you disable parts completely, cut off the VCC, what happens is that the part will get the power uh, over the data pins, believe it or not, and there will be some uh, spillage uh, happening on the VCC pin back into the circuit. So there, there is a lot of uh, uncertainty there. I wasn't sure at the beginning what's going on, why, you know, one board works just fine, the other one doesn't. And then after looking into these parts, I kind of made a conclusion. So for that reason, I've added a bunch of protection diodes um, here, there, even pull-ups also have uh, diodes now in place. Uh, all, the, all the major rails have uh, uh, this improvement. So, I mean, lo and behold, after this modification, it's just fine. And um, as you can see here, I have version uh, 1.4 running. And, um, um, I mean, I, I did try um, two types of TI parts. One is the latch, the other one is the flip-flop and seems fine. And right now I'm, I'm running uh, using the PyStorm, as you can see here. And I can turn off. Here is the switch. I'm using just a jumper now, but uh, in a minimum case, you would have a switch. And then if I power on here, you will see that it's... Uh, going up okay so here you can see the uh, hold the reset and halt uh, was released for 68k and we have a uh, minimum hard drive booting up here no problem so right now the system is executing using 68,000. so it's i mean it's it's a basically very simple circuit uh, there is just a little bit of logic determining uh, you know which uh, reset and halt signals are in use and uh, otherwise, other signal um, signals are kept in um, um, in um, in this uh, active state. So the rest, uh, another half of the system is not uh, is not acting. Uh, so that's as I said, it's fairly simple. You can see everything in schematics. But again, what was making a problem was this. Uh, backfiring or parasitic uh, powering uh, coming from these parts. I assume Texas Instruments never wanted these parts to be on board, uh, not be really being powered, um, which makes sense. But um, on the other hand, uh, sometimes maybe design will require that. And for that reason, I think Nexperia did a much better job. So there you go. One more time, I'm going to switch back to uh, PyStorm to show you. So this, this is now I'm simulating what will happen if uh, you just uh, flip the switch. If I can get my jumper back. There we go. So let's say I flip the switch now back to the 
I start position and uh, you will see another set of LEDs will flip back. Green should be off and blue should be on, I believe. There you go. And uh, you see the hardware booting up the system. So it's a pretty cool, easy way for you to enjoy either original CPU or PyStorm, depending on what kind of games you want to play. Uh, some games you prefer better on 68,000. Uh, if you want to play some RTG games, uh, of course, you want to have uh, PyStorm. So that seems to be all right. Uh, other improvements, uh, someone mentioned that I should uh, probably move LED for PyStorm on the left because PyStorm is on the left and uh, LED for 68,000 on the right, which I did. Uh, I just flipped the position so it's more logical. Um, so you know which, which part of the system is, is working. But I want to say one more thing, uh, and I'm going to show you this in a second. This is not going to be the final version. Schematic-wise, yes, I'm not going to change schematic, um, schematics, but um, it, I'm, I'm, I'm writing, uh, I'm right now I'm finishing um, um, final 1.5 version that's going to be a release. Uh, and the major difference is uh, it's not going to be double-sided. Because if you look at this now, I have a bunch of parts on the bottom and of course the majority of the components are on the top. But this is just uh, not optimal because this way um, it's more difficult to assemble, uh, especially if you're doing in the assembly fab or you need one more stencil, it's another step in the process. It's unnecessary. So uh, version 1.5 that's practically done right now and I'm, I'll show you the um, uh, 3D model will have everything on the top and it kind of looks cool. Uh, I've used the bottom side to kind of make a little bit of diagram and uh, I described what each component does um, just because I have all this space available and you'll see it in a second. Um, so that's that. Seems like it's working fine. I tested this with different versions of Minimig. Uh, I've tested this with the Mega 500 works just fine and uh, seems to be good. Now moving to um, 3D model for the latest version. So you see that it's more packed, densely packed. Um, in, in fact, if you go on the back side, there's nothing here. But each of these uh, um, fields here will correspond with the field on the other side. So you know exactly what it is. So. If you're wondering what is this big part doing here, is this important, not important, you can see that this will just invert uh, the low signals uh, for active low signals for halt and reset. So LED indicators make more sense. Um, then this is a fuse. If you turn around, you see this is a fuse. I like adding fuse on, on, on my designs because why not? It's, uh, it can save your uh, card in case something goes wrong. And then all of the other stuff. For example, here you can see uh, this part uh, on the other side. If I move, you can see that this is uh, halt and reset to active low for 60k. Uh, this part, for example, here you can see that uh, what are the sources for the reset and halt signal and stuff like that. So you can you can see this digital logic uh, created in using the discrete components. So you can see exactly what it does. So that's cool. These are the diodes that I mentioned uh, before, they're preventing any uh, potential uh, backfiring or um, parasitic uh, powering from, from components. Um, and uh, I did that for every rail, which is important. So even I made this jumper here where you can choose if you want to power CBTDs level shifters all the time or only when you switch to a by storm uh, position so that that's what this does and same here for uh, voltage regulator uh, for re regulating from 5 to 3.3 volts if you want to run it all the time or only when the switch is uh, flipped uh, and uh, by testing i came to the conclusion that it's best for uh, voltage regulator to be on provide the power but uh, um, cvdds uh, you can safely turn off when you're not using them so uh, that is when the pie storm is not active. So this is uh, this is that and uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm looking forward to get this final version, but before I do, the other one is exactly the same. 
1.4 and I'll have uh, 1.4 on the, um, on Minimig website. I have some of the, I believe 20 ish units uh, and uh, I'll, I'll just post that on the website. So whoever wants to grab one and test as an early tester, um, you can. And uh, also I want to mention that I did test this for a, for a while now and it seems to be good. I cannot find any, any sort of issue. So that's that. It looks like we're making good progress. Uh, I'm happy with um, how it performs. The, um, I measured all the voltages, uh, all the uh, potential caveats. Um, also, I measured the um, milliamps and this and that. So how much each component is uh, consuming, uh, measured the temperatures and all that sort of thing when you're dealing with the, with the prototype just to make sure I'm not missing something obvious, and I hope I'm not. Uh, and uh, that's that's pretty much uh, a summary. And uh, next video, I'm going to create another video shortly, uh, assembling a complete uh, Minimig uh, board, case, motherboard, Pi Storm. I'm going to attach a little switch as well. Uh, and uh, we can kind of test and see how it works in um, in reality, like testing some some software and games. So that's that's a short update. Uh, I think um, it's a major milestone. I, I I really love when I have the design that's um, that I'm happy with, and uh, this is where we are right now. Again, thanks for watching, subscribe just to be in a loop because um, as I said, new videos are coming. Uh, I'm also making a progress with the Big Amicube AGI chipset that's going to come as well soon as an as a update. And, and um, yeah, talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye bye.